once again we're up last and is right at the very top because we're having problems with our wind vane. So this is the first time I'm left alone at the boat with Ella. We're in the marina in Halamet. Um, John had to fly over to Australia for some family uh, things. And of course, the moment he leaves, there's a storm com coming in. It's been blowing quite a bit for the last couple of days and it's supposed to, to blow all the way up to 50 knots today, right on our bow. So, yeah, it's starting to look a bit ugly out here. Let me see if I can show the rest. Yeah. Still nice and cozy in the cockpit, but yeah, that's it. I guess the video doesn't seem to capture so well the fact that all the boats are rocking madly and the marina is starting to fill with rubbish stuff coming in from the outside because the wind is blowing right in the entrance. So anyway, yesterday we had winds up to 40 knots. Um, at the moment they're just shy of 30, but already some damage. There's a big boat over there. I'm not sure if that's the UV strip of their stay sail or if they had a socket, but um, yeah, it's gone. So the storm that uh, we're getting uh, comes from south and it's bringing um, winds from the Sahara Desert and oh, look at those lovely windows. Look at that. had to bring Ella in because although it's not raining she's getting completely covered in dust and wow. Let me, let me open the mesh. I mean I have one window open to get some air but look at that. That's all the Sahara sand in our windows. So the wind is now stopped, but anyway, this is what left us for bouncing like a mad cat. And yep, look at the windows. This is becoming a recurrent event. Every morning, the marina gets flooded um, by rubbish. It seems to be a problem in this um, area of the Med, between Italy and Tunisia, because we had the same problem in Sicily. And, uh, yeah. It's layers and layers and layers of plastic and bottles and, you know, junk food wrapping. And these little balls are Posidonia balls, so that's why um, we know that it's brought by this by the swell, because um, that's how those balls are formed it's from the swell. And we had the same problem in Sicily. Our boat used to get surrounded by by rubbish, and we usually pick it up and try to dispose it properly. But it's what do you do with so much? When it's this much, what do you do? It's all over the place. So, yeah, with the help of a neighbor, we're picking up all the trash we can, bagging it, and then disposing it properly, we hope. So these are Posidonia balls. Uh, this is organic matter. It's uh, made out of um, Posidonia seaweed and it's formed by the by the rolling waves. Um, so this one I'm not going to put on the bags. I'm just going to put it back in the water. Uh, returning nature to nature. So already fill the bags and the guy from this boat has been helping me. Okay. Well, he, he picked up the first batch. Oh, no, like, come around and pick it no one has been coming and it's been like this every single day.
so some of the plastic is already sinking and um, so it only lifts when the next storm comes in but this is a big problem for all of us After I started picking up the rubbish, the neighbor from this boat got a net and helped. 15 minutes on of us working, the neighbor from the boat of three boats further down decided to get his net and help. And 40 minutes later, the marina staff finally decided to get the dinghy with a net and they're doing the middle. So yeah, we're picking up all the rubbish from the sea, or in this case from the marina. And from my side, we've already picked up two of those bags full. That's the third. And yeah, it only takes one person and then everyone will probably start uh, doing the same. So since we got the dream, I've noticed um, when inspecting one of the covers that we had a bit of rust. Um, on the hull, on the inside, and I identified the origin of the rust. Um, this um, cylinder here, which is a rubber or plastic membrane that is part of the water lock system. Uh, basically, the water lock is uh, part of the exhaust system, so this bladder is full of water. Um, and it has two stainless steel endings, one on each side, obviously. Um, and this side is okay. This side was corroded and we have a repair done. So the first time we've noticed um, the rust uh, was basically through this cupboard. So obviously there's supposed to be two doors here that we had to remove. Um, there's a shelf in the middle, a fixed shelf. And then there's this little opening here which has a lid and as I was inspecting the water tank, the water here that is here, I've noticed the rust uh, under those pipes. Yeah, and then the rust would run from here all the way on the hall, all the way here. So this is the engine compartment and we could see it on the engine compartment. But um, in here I could see it, but the repair is actually done on the cupboard on the other side. On this cabin is actually the cabin that we have access um, to the system, the same. Um, I had to remove the two doors and the shelf that was in the middle, fixed shelf. And then we have this access panel here that allows us to actually um, access the system. Uh, but if we check through the engine compartment, so basically part of it is this tube that connects the engine, collects water on that other water. And so we could see some rust um, that was coming. I've already cleaned it, but there's still some traces. There was a rust trail going under the engine all the way in front of the sump pit. Um, Anyway, we've cleaned it. I'm not sure if I'll, let me see if I can actually. Yeah, so you can actually still see it. Um, the rust trail, it's here. So it goes in here all the way there. It was not significant, but is um, a well known um, fail of the system. We will be looking and replacing this entire um, system, water lock system, with a more modern version. It's all plastic and you shouldn't have this corrosion problem. So this is part of the muffler wet exhaust system. Also known as water lock. Also known as a water lock. According to Google. According to Google. But basically when it's when it's installed it sits sort of on an angle and it's got water in it. Water sits up to about here. So there's salt water. Wait, there's a like a plastic membrane tube here, right? And it sits like this and it has another tube over there. An exhaust pipe. Yeah. Yes. Flexible exhaust pipe. So basically it corroded out this bottom edge. So with the help of Mick we got uh, a new piece made up and they've cut the old piece out 
and welded a new piece in. So that's all been welded in and through there. And that's the outside. So it's good for another couple of years. Whereas before, we might have only gone another month or two and then it would have uh, pissed water and gases into the car, into the boat. Not pretty. Not pretty at all. So first thing I want is for you to get that motion's chair on. Mm -hmm. Up. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Can you pull just the code zero? Like just this one palm, but just the code zero. Just the code zero. Again, stop. I know, that's why I wanted to do this now. So, very early morning, sun is just rising, the moon is just set. And once again we're up the mast and it's right at the very top because we're having problems with our wind vane which helps us tell the wind speed and the wind angle. The speed's been okay but the wind angle hasn't been working so Anna's up there trying to clean it and uh, spray it with some electrical projector and then we'll probably assemble it and see if it works. If not we might be looking to buy a new one. So the red is for power, the yellow is for wind speed, and the green and the blue are for um, the wind angle. Uh, we've already tested it. Um, the red one is within the limits of the test. However, the green and the blue are giving us values on the machine that are below the standard. So we believe the problem is 
there. So we need to figure out if it's a cable problem or if it's a transducer problem. Okay, so John wired a way of doing a test in here, so let's see. So, okay, uh, red to red, right? Yeah. Just in a certain position, otherwise it jumps. So, red to red, and now yeah. the, let's, to test the gray. The, let's test the power. So, we got 8 volts. 8 volts. Test the, is this blue? Test the, the blue. So the value for that one should be between 2 and 8, is it? Between 2 and 8, and it's constantly around... 1 point something, 1 point 1.2 something. 1 1.2 something, yeah. And the same for the green one. Yeah, that should be between 2 and 5. Okay. So neither of those are doing that. Now this one should be 8. And that's very close to 8. Okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our social media. Head out to our Patreon page and buy the dog a bone.